All right, guys, welcome to a new episode of Burning Eights. And uh, today we're we got Rich Reiner back in Jake's boat, and he made the trip all the way up from Florida. So episode three in the series that we've got here, and uh, the first two were so we did the first one was some oddball unique baits, as you kind of said that we don't normally see out there, that uh, something different to throw towards muskies. Then uh, the last episode was minnow baits, which there was quite a bit of info in that as far as the different styles and uh, just little different options that are out there for as far as minnow baits. Now we're going to go into another style here, which is going to be the dive and rise. That's what everybody as, calls it today as dive and rise. Yep. I mean, when you look at jerk baits in, ge with jerk baits in general, right. you basically, you're lumping, uh, you know, uh, gliders and dive and rise. Now, you know, as we're doing this, if, you know, if I come back and call it a chop bait, that's what we used to call them, you know, 30 years ago, chop baits. Yep. Because if you watch a bobby bait and or a suic or even a navin, which is more of the modern day version of a bobby and a suic, it's, you know, they're chopping through the water. Mm -hmm. So, right. and of course, I think it's definitely a Wisconsin favorite. I mean, suics are kind of like peanut butter and jelly in Wisconsin, you yeah, know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody throws a suic. I think it's some of your favorite baits, oh, yeah, correct? For sure. Now, here's the thing. The baits that we touched on, we showed some oddball baits. And I think in that episode, we wanted to show people that there are other baits out there they may not be aware with that are, that are you know, tools that would definitely be beneficial for them to have here right you know jig fishing uh the spy bait you know the uh, jake you know took a liking to the uh curly spin from enticer tackle those are all you know good baits to be used under certain conditions um on the other hand you've got you know dive dive and rise as everybody calls them today but we call them chop baits i'm always going to call them chop baits yeah. so if anybody ever hears me refer to them a chop bait just know that you're dive and rise and your top i mean you'd say like you got suix navins bobbies those are all yeah those are the main like ones the main ones I would you say. know i've got another new one a lot of people aren't aware of but we'll show that later on but yeah. here's the key thing you know what these are not hard baits to fish with okay the the problem with these baits is guys try to overwork these baits if there's one thing that they're going to learn from this is not to overwork them right they're not i you know when a guy is saying i'm out here i'm jerking that suic you know i don't jerk a suic i pull a suic mm -hmm. and i think you've got an underwater camera and i think you're, you're going to see the difference and what my suics are looking like you know as opposed to some guys just kind of where the baits diving and then rising back i don't want the bait to do that but you know, this is pretty simple. I don't get real crazy on a lot of different baits. This here is a six inch bobby bait. And you and I have talked about this. Okay, so when it comes to fishing a, a dive and rise or a chop bait, I like a bait that has a lot of contrast. Yep. The key thing I think we're gonna show here is the fact that people have a tendency to overwork them. Yep. And you're gonna really notice it with that suic. So this here is a bobby bait, and I've seen guys take and they'll draw real long strides. Basically, I just take and I pop it back and forth. Yeah. See how it's walking back and forth? Perfect. Yeah, it looks great. But it's got a wobble at the same time. Yep. And again, it's, it's a bait where, let's say if I'm fishing around pads like this, this is a bait that I can take and walk around pads without hooking the pads up, mm -hmm. okay? But because, you know, Jake's back there with the camera and you want to be able to see this on your underwater camera. That's a good looking bait. And, and I'm not drawing not... down as much because I want you to be able to see the bait. Right. But look at that wobble to it. Yeah, I mean, that's... You're, not, you're barely doing anything with that rod. No. You know? That's the thing. You know, dive and rise baits are the easiest baits to fish with. The problem, the biggest problem is guys want to over tune them or they want to overwork them. Yeah. You know. And it's just with, with a, like a suet with that tail. I mean, you don't have to do it much. No. To make, to make a big, you know, to make a change in how that, the action of that bait. You saw before I put this bait in the water, I barely touched that tail, mm -hmm. you know. Right. So, you know, I have a tendency to use a bobby bait more so. Again, 
uh, in tougher conditions, shallow water areas where I want the bait to dance around pads like this and or shallow water areas, okay? Yep. It's just, it's a bait that my wife, especially Penny, this is one of her favorite, you know, sure. her chop baits. Which one do you want next? The Suic. This is the one, you know, I brought this one with. This is the one bait that probably gets overplayed you know, I've I've tuned so many baits for a lot of people over the years, you know, the Suics over the years. Yep. And the, I can tell you, this is the one bait that everybody overworks and overtunes. You don't need to bend the corners. I mean, if you want to bend the corners, that's great. I mean, go ahead, bend your corners, but it's not needed. Yeah. You just need to tune this, you know, just so slightly. I think um, on Smith Fishing Outdoors, Jeff Van Remortal, uh, you know, showed a uh, how to tune a suic, and he was dead nuts on. It doesn't take much to tune a suic. The other thing I also do on a suic is I always split ring a suic. Sure. It allows the bait to turn a lot easier. So, as we're losing light here, interesting, interesting tactics, little tips. Yeah, I just to try. yeah. Now. You watch this bait coming through the water. See how it twists and turns and side to side? Yep. I'll throw it out a little bit further because there. No, it's suics are a great working bait. Oh, they're, you know, but the problem is they overwork them. If you look at what I'm doing is I'm pulling down, I'm pulling, not jerking. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing is I'm stopping right here. I'm not, you know, going past my body. If a fish hits you and you're over here, you're not ready for a hook set. Mm -hmm. So when you work these baits, you just basically take I do one short, catch up with my line, one long. Short, long. Short, long. Short, long. Sometimes I may go short, short, and then long. Look how nice that bait stays down there, but yeah. if you watch it, it shimmies as it's coming through the water. Right. So, I don't... Yeah, it's it looks it looks great. See how it walks from side to side? Mm -hmm. That's what a good suic does. Yeah. And they do that, but if there's anything that is to go wrong with a suic is because the guys are overtuning the suics or they're overworking the right. suics. Right. So I mean we, I, try, we try to usually we try to usually keep things irregular too as far as when we're twitching middle baits or even suics. It's sometimes I think it, we've said it in our videos, but it's easy to get into rhythm. Right. Where you get rhythmic and almost trance the fit, put the fish in a trance. But, you know, like you said, sometimes you're doing a short, sometimes you're doing a long pull. You're, you're kind of mixing it up. I'm marrying the, you know? I'm varying the speed up. Yep. The, yep. The pull, I'm varying the pull up is right. what I'm actually doing. Right. I mean, here's the biggest thing with a suic. You need to go fish it. You don't need to over tune it. And you don't need to over work it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with a bobby bait as it is with a suic. Yeah, and we've had better. We have, I mean, you can, we can... We've worked both, but like, I think what's easier maybe to learn on is a weighted suet. Just yep. because it stays down a little bit better than your unweighted. Right, I agree. Now, one of the things, this is a Chaos Navin. The thing with the Navin is I take and I, I put a, a lead weight into this. Yep. Whereas a suet, you know, you can buy a suet, you know, unweighted, you know, weighted. You can buy, um, you know, plastic. So it's got a a tremendous amount of models for somebody to choose from. Yep. But the Navin, I, I specifically like because it has a tendency to run deeper than the Bobby and the Suic. And it's all because I'm able to change the weights in this. Sure. And so uh, I've done very well with these. I'm, I'm very pleased. Uh, Chaos is... This is the 10 inch? This is the 10 inch. This is the size that I probably favor the most. Yeah. You Chaos know, the 8 inch, I'll tell you, for some guys, Brian Scaife, I mean, he's in... He's deadly with an eight inch sure. bait, you yeah. know, but I in this bait I'm normally throwing it later in the year and because I want to get the bait down deeper 
again, I'm just pulling. And, and that weight gets that bait down deeper and you'll see it'll, it'll walk from side to side. But it's moving, yeah, it's getting down there. See, it walked to the left and now went to the right. Went to the left, went to the right. And it lot, it's, gonna, it's gonna be just like, here it comes, it's floating up. It's just got that nice, slow, methodical action to it. Yep. Okay? Yeah. So when the fish are, are, are tough and you know this is a this is a deep water dive and rise and that's why it's so it's simple they're just tools yep six inch bobby you noticed you know stays shallower for shallower water applications i do well with it when you're fishing a pad area or newly emerging weed beds yep. you got a suic that they make a variety of baits you know or, or models that you can use to suit your taste i mean they've been around for three generations yeah right you know i mean they catch fish yep you, everybody should have them in their box and it's a standard. Agreed. And of course, Navins, and again, a lot of people don't even realize that Chaos Tackle has, you know, a, it has the Navin or other gliders or has top water baits. Bucktails. But yeah, bucktails. They need to go on, you know, the Chaos Tackle site and actually check out right. a lot of what they have. Yeah. There's one other bait I'm going to mention, and a lot of people aren't aware of it. So this is the new, the, diff, the new, different one, right? This is called a donkey tail, and that bait huh, is made by Muskie Guide Corey Olson. Okay. He lives up in Conover, Wisconsin. Uh, he spends a lot of time, you know, great fisherman, great guy, and he hit a home run with this. Here's what happens in the fall time. Um, I think when you're throwing, you know, a bobby bait has a specific time I like to throw it, you know, in, in those spring and early summer period in newly emerging weeds and, and lily pads. You know, the suic, we talked about that, that's just a given. I mean, it's, it's uh, standard. The navin, a deep water dive rise. In the fall time, I've noticed with gliders or with uh, dive and rise, the slower the action, it seems the more active the fish are on it. Yeah. And if you watch this bait, I'll tell you who makes a bait in the same category is Musky Innovations. They make a bait, was it Dying Dog? Yep. And basically this is a, a version of, of that, but it's not, it's, it's got its own thing. And, but you can work this bait so easy. But it, it's deadly in cold water. I think that's the best way to put it. This bait is deadly in cold water. See how it just kind of hangs? Very much so. Look at that. Look at that bait, that tail just flutter. Wow. And see how it kind of jackknifes and then pops back up and opens? Yeah, can you run that a little shallower? Can I? Yeah. I'll try. It's, it, it runs a little bit deeper. Probably not going to work as good. It'd be better Still, in a swimming pool. Looks good though. You know, we did talk yeah. about doing this in a swimming pool. You yeah, know, because then everybody can see those baits. But yeah. I'm telling you, the fish bark on this thing. They sure. really. And here's a, here again. You know, tough bait to find. I think you know. I think I know. Taps and tackle has these. I think uh, Team Rhino has them. Or you got the shows. That's it. Right. That's about as many baits as he can make a year. You know, um, people don't realize that making baits is a lot of work. Oh, yeah. You know, this happens to be my favorite pattern. Yeah, it's a good looking pattern. Yeah. So in the fall time, we're talking the end of September, water cools down, October into the first part of November. Mm -hmm. This is a bait you want to throw. So, cool. yeah, we've done well with these. Corey's got a winner here. If you get a chance, you meet him at the Wisconsin Muskie Expo, or again, uh, it's a dynamite bait. Yeah, it looks nice, really it, nice. It does nice, it is really nice. So yeah. if, uh, you know, well, here's the thing, you know, you guys work really hard on going out. I mean, you guys are working all week long. You're, you're, you're the epitome of all musky fishermen. You're working all week long. 
you're you're getting off of work you're out the door on Friday night you, you know I mean here you are both newlyweds and you're fishing you're putting in 15 16 hours a day this is not gravy mm -hmm. you know and and there's days I'm sure you know I, I don't care who you are musky fishing isn't easy you're going to have you know some off days and you're trying to put together a video to play on your channel YouTube channel right mm -hmm. yep. that's what you call it I'm not as you well know I'm not technical about this stuff you got it but uh, I understand that and so I think the more you're exposed to some of these newer baits you know the baits you're not aware of you know hopefully it's going to help you become more efficient and straining some water, you know, yeah. and uh, putting more fish in the boat so that you can give your viewers more shows. Absolutely, yeah, and I, we hope that this information has given you guys some more tips and a different outlook on different baits and information on how they actually work and your options that are out there. So it's easy, it's easy for, I mean, we do it too. We always, it's, it's really easy to get in a rut as far as baits are concerned. And, oh, I know what you know, baits that, you, that you're into. You know, I well, mean, and, and part of it is we we know what works, so we got a weekend, and that's that's you know that's what we're gonna use our our top baits to try to get a fish in the boat, and hopefully get an episode for you guys to you know to learn off of, or for us to learn from by watching the footage back. And um, yeah, it's I mean, obviously it's it's easy to get stuck in ruts for anybody that's fishing. Well, one thing that's impressive about you, I know that's why I brought it up in one of the episodes before. You guys started doing this. Not so much because you want to go out and impress people that you were catching fish, no. you know, and you were try not trying to be a hero in this business. You were actually, st you started doing this because you wanted to learn. You started filming because you wanted to learn, right. you know, from your mistakes. If, and, and the only way you can learn is actually by watching yourself. Yep. And I get that. Yeah. And I mean, you know? overall, I mean, we're, yeah, we're just, we're just trying to. We were like learn, you know, learning what we could from watching the footage back, and then took it back to YouTube and said, "Well, hopefully people can learn too." And there's been plenty of mistakes that you guys have watched over the years that we put out there because hopefully it's not the same. You know, helps you guys not make the same mistakes or learn from us. But well, I'll tell you one thing: my wife Penny, she loves it when you make a mistake because you jump like a jackrabbit every time you do, and she uh -huh. just. She hoots, man. She gets, she laughs her hind end off when you do that. She, uh, yeah, I've, I've screwed up my fair share of figure eights. I'll be the first one. I can't, I mean, you can't deny if anybody thinks they're super easy when a fish is, big fish is chasing it down, there's, there's, the rush is what gets me. And that's what, that's what half the time, you know, screws me up. But, but I think part of when you're doing this, it's, that's part of the rush, but you're not just fishing. You're also taking care of how many cameras in this boat. Mm -hmm. When you see Jake on the front of the boat, I mean, you're kind of, you're focused on making sure all these cameras are running. Jake is like an Irish setter. He's a, he's a pointer, you know, I mean, he's a bird dog. I mm -hmm. mean, he's on it. I mean, he is focused. He doesn't talk. He just fishes hard. And if you watch the way he sets the hook on a fish, I mean, there's that fish in if that fish hits Jake's bait that fish is in trouble yeah every time he's, he's very good at concentrating oh, he's unbelievable yep. he's quiet but he's lethal <laughs> so you know with the bucktail segment and the topwater segment there was a lot of working parts on those two baits yep and I think even with the bucktails the bucktails that I'm making you know, you've been testing some bucktails for me, yep. as well as several other guys, and 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 you have, you know, you've seen that's a, that's a bait that's got a lot of working parts, as does a topwater. A some of the odd baits, the uh, you know the the, the dive and rise, the you know uh, minnow baits, you really can't screw them up unless you're overworking the bait or you're trying to overtune it. That's the key thing, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, everybody's looking for these hidden secrets. There are no hidden secrets. They're tools. You find out where they fit into your repertoire when you're on the water fishing and you pound like crazy and hope that for the best that you're gonna get in some fish. Right. So that's really what it boils down to. Yep, musky fishing's and it's not easy. But no. It can be very rewarding, so. so. Well, I think that uh, concludes our dive and rise or, or chop bait episode. And uh, 
we appreciate the info once again. So we got to thank you for coming up from Florida, but we got a couple more episodes on the list yet that we're going to film tomorrow night. Yes. Yet. So we'll, uh, that'll be a rubber episode and the other one that you had in It's going to be gliders. Gliders. So with that, we'll uh, wrap this episode and I think we might try to do some fishing yet tonight. Let's do it. All right. Well, we got to thank you guys for watching as always. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next episode.